In this example we've got a reservoir that's full of water and we need to move water from that reservoir to a second reservoir. The second reservoir, the water surface is 5 metres below the water surface of the first reservoir and we need water to be delivered at a flow rate of 1.5 metres cubed per second. The pipe between the two reservoirs is 20,000 metres long, so 20 kilometres long, and the diameter of the pipe is 1.25 metres. We're told in the question that we can assume the friction factor as 0.0175, and what we want to work out is how much head would a pump need to add to make this system work, and how much power would that pump require to operate this system. So what we need to be able to do this calculation. Firstly, we need Bernoulli's equation. So elevation at one plus pressure head at one plus velocity head at one minus losses equals elevation at two plus pressure at two plus velocity head at two. So that's Bernoulli's equation, it's going to govern our energies in this system. The other thing we need to know is how much power a pump requires. So the power that a pump requires is density of water times by gravity times by the flow rate of the system times by the head that the pump is adding to the system divided by the pump's efficiency. And in this example, the pump's efficiency is given to us as 80%. So the first thing we need to work out is how much energy in terms of pressure head the pump needs to add. And secondly, how much power we need to provide to the pump to, to be able to give that extra energy. So before we go any further, we, need, we can start out by working what the velocity needs to be in this system. So we're told the flow rate is required to be 1.5 meters cubed per second. We're told the diameter of the pipe so we can work out the mean velocity in this pipe. So we know that Q is U over A. So U is going to be, sorry, so we know that Q is U times A. So U is going to be Q over A. So Q is 1.5 meters cubed per second. And A is going to be the area of the pipe. So pi R squared, the diameter is 1.25 meters so the radius will be that over 2. So the velocity we need in our pipe is 1.22 metres per second. So now we've got our velocity, we can start to think about how we'd solve this equation. Before we actually solve this equation, we're going to think about what, how far we would get if we tried to design this system as being gravity fed. So if we thought we're not going to put a pump in the system, we're just going to imagine what would happen if we tried to design it just being fed by gravity. So if we think about our reservoir with the pipe coming out the base of it, we know that the reservoir is filled to a certain height Z, or there's a certain elevation of the water surface above the discharge point of the pipe. And we know that the pipe is 20,000 metres long. So if we were to work out what Z needed to be to give us a Q of 1.5 metres cubed per second coming out of this pipe, which corresponds to a velocity of 1.22 metres per second, we could apply Bernoulli's equation between two points. So we could say Z1 plus P1 over rho G plus U1 squared over 2G minus losses equals Z2 plus P2 over rho G plus U2 squared over 2G. So we can write out Bernoulli's equation. And we can apply it between the water surface of this reservoir, so point number one, 
and point number two where the water's coming out the pipe into the storage reservoir. So at point number one, we have elevation, we can assume zero pressure because we're open to atmosphere, we can assume zero velocity because the velocity of the water surface of the reservoir is negligible compared to the velocity in the pipe. At point number two, we've got no elevation because the pipe is at the base of the system, we've got no pressure because the pipe is open to atmosphere so we've just got velocity head. So what we could say is that for this system the elevation minus losses equals your velocity head at point number two. So to work out what elevation we need to drive the system at a discharge of 1.5 meters cubed per second we could just rearrange for Z1. So Z1 would equal the velocity head at two plus losses which is going to be equal to the velocity head at two plus our losses due to friction. So in this example, we're just considering losses due to friction, we're not considering any other losses. And if we plug the numbers into that equation, we know that our velocity needs to be 1.22 meters per second. We're told in the first part of the question that the friction factor we can assume is 0 0.0175. The pipe length is 20,000 meters. The pipe diameter is 1.25 meters and we'll times that by the velocity head again. And what this tells us is that what we require in this system is an elevation of 21.2 meters to drive a flow of 1.5 meters cubed per second through the system. So in order to fulfill our design brief, the elevation of the first reservoir would need to be 21.2 metres above where the outlet pipe uh, discharges to, above the second reservoir. So that's what we would require for the system to be gravity fed. But in the question we're told that the distance from the, the elevation from the surface of the first reservoir to where the pipe discharges is actually 5 metres. So we don't have anything like enough energy to drive this system just using gravity. So if we were to draw the energy line for this, this example when z equals 5 metres, when we've got 5 metres of elevation, what we know is that we have the equivalent of 5 metres of pressure head in this tank. We know that for the water to be going at 1.22 metres per second when it leaves this pipe, the difference between these two points needs to be 21.2 meters but we know that there's only five meters of elevation in the tank so we've only got five meters of pressure head to play with so what's going to happen is as water moves down this tank and experiences losses due to friction we're basically going to run out of energy so at some point down this system we're going to run out of energy if this was just gravity fed. So what we're actually going to need to do in this system, because we've only got 5 metres of elevation, we're going to need to put a pump in this system. So what would now happen is we'll start out with some initial energy level. That energy level is going to drop but the pump is going to re-energise the system so that by the end of the pipe we're going to have enough energy to be able to keep the system flowing at the target flow rate of 1.5 meters cubed per second. So what that means if we go back to the original conception of the problem is that we're now going to have to add an additional component to Bernoulli's equation. So we're actually going to have to add energy from our pump. So we're going to have to add a delta H in here. So we've got our initial energy at 1. We're going to lose energy from our losses, but then we can re-add energy by adding a pump into the system. And then that will give us enough energy at 2 to fulfill this design brief. So at some point in this system, we're going to have to add a pump that will keep the system flowing. So let's do the equation now to work out how much energy our pump needs to add. So let's do Bernoulli's equation between point number 1 
and point number two. So again, at point number one, exactly the same as the last time, there's no pressure, there's no velocity, all our energy is in, in, in elevation. At point number two, there's no elevation and there's no pressure because we're discharging to atmosphere, so all of our energy is in velocity head. So what we end up with is that Z1 minus losses plus the energy from our pump equals U2 squared over 2G. And what we want to work out is how much energy does our pump need to add to the system, so we want to find delta H. So we can rearrange this equation for delta H, so we can say that delta H equals U2 squared over 2G plus our losses minus Z1, which is going to equal U2 squared over 2G plus our losses due to friction, which are the only losses that we're accounting for, minus Z1. So we actually have everything we need to plug the numbers into this equation now. So we know what the velocity needs to be. It needs to be 1.22 meters per second. We know the friction factor. It's 0 0.0175. We know the pipe length is 20,000 meters. We know the pipe diameter is 1.25 meters. And we know that Z1 is five meters of elevation. And what this tells us is that the pump needs to add to the system 16.32 meters of energy to keep the system flowing at 1.5 meters cubed per second. So what we've done by adding the pump term to Bernoulli's equation, we've worked out how, many, how much extra energy the pump needs to add in order for this system to be able to flow at the design brief target flow rate of 1.5 meters cubed per second. So this is how much delta H the pump needs to add to the system to keep it flowing. So now we have that figure, we can now actually work out how much power we need to provide to the pump to give us this extra energy. So the power that the pump needs to provide is density of water times gravity times the flow rate the pump's operating at times the head that the pump is giving to the system divided by the efficiency of the pump. So density of water times by gravity times by the flow rate the system is operating at times by how much head the pump is adding to the system divided by the efficiency of the pump, which we're told is 80%, so 0.8. And that tells us that the power the pump needs to provide to this system is 300200 watts. So about 300 kilowatts of power will be needed to make this system work under these conditions. So if you were designing a pump, a pump system and you needed to know what, what level of pump you needed to keep this system working. What we've done in this example is work out how much head the pump needs to give to the system at a certain flow rate. So we know what we need from our pump in terms of energy it needs to add to the system at a certain flow rate. And then we've used the pumping equation to work out how much power we need to have to provide to that pump in order for that pump to fulfill the design brief.